This for us is an important symposium and we hope the other deans will join us. Deputy Dean of the College of Human Sciences, you are noticed as well. Thank you for being here. Of course, I'm delighted that the, the science colleges are here because in my view, a conversation about the future of the humanities and social sciences is also a conversation about the natural, the future of the natural and, 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 and physical sciences. So it's important that we all have a conversation together. But why are we having this symposium? The Minister of Higher Education commissioned a report with a view of developing, to developing a charter for the humanities and social sciences. And this report was published in 2011, and it raises a number of critical areas of concern about the general state of the humanities and social sciences, and suggests what might be done to ameliorate the generally palace state of these fields. The report also signals what is anticipated to be done at a national level. The past year has also seen the publication of the Academy of Sciences of South Africa's consensus study on the future of the humanities in South Africa, which also brings the humanities and social sciences into sharp scrutiny. The Academy of Sciences report refers to this as a crisis and points to the declining, to declining student enrollments, declining graduation rates, and, and decreasing funding for the humanities and social sciences. But of course, if truth be told, the concerns about the state of the humanities and social sciences are not new. In an introductory paragraph of an essay by Hans Rosenhaupt entitled Modern Foreign Language Study and Needs of Our Times, which was published in a journal in 1940, he wrote, in our days, the field of modern languages is undergoing a severe crisis. There is a general crisis in the humanities. There is a particular and more acute crisis in the modern foreign languages. This concern about the crisis of the humanities continued throughout the 60s, and in 1965, Penguin published a widely read book entitled Crisis in the Humanities, and that was in 1965. That work analyzed the crisis in art, <coughs> philosophy, literary studies, and history. In 1964, the American Council of Learned Societies published a report of the Commission on the Humanities, and in the 70s, the crisis continued to be acknowledged and was said to be spreading. We can go on and on about how this discourse of the crisis of the humanities continued throughout the years. The point that I'm trying to make is that this discourse is not new, and it's certainly not specific to South Africa. Conversations about the state of the humanities and social sciences continue to take place even today. In November 2010, David Scotton, president of Cornell University, issued a call to defend the humanities. He argued that there is no sufficient dialogue on the humanities and challenged the Board of Trustees at Cornell to step up and advocate for the arts and humanities. The Chronicle of Higher Education, as well as Inside Higher Education, published frequent laments for the state of the humanities. There are even books published on the crisis of the humanities. In her recent book entitled, Not for Profit, Why Democracy Needs the Humanities, Martha Nospam argues that we are in the midst of a crisis of massive proportions and grave global significance. In response to this dire situation, she argues that we must resist efforts to reduce education to a tool for the gross national product. Rather, than, uh, rather, we must work to reconnect education to the humanities in order to give students the capacity to be true democratic citizens of their countries and the world. Arts and Humanities in Higher Education recently published a special issue that focuses on the place of the humanities in the contemporary university and in intellectual culture more broadly. All the articles in that special issue make a case for the humanities, for their, for their importance, their sustenance, and their place in society. As we speak, the British Academy is busy with a report on how research in the human and social sciences contributes to the cultural, social, and economic health wealth and reputation of the UK. Colleagues, these are just a few, of, a few examples that illustrate the importance of continuing our conversation on the future of the humanities. There is no doubt that we need to advocate for the humanities, but perhaps we need more than just advocacy for the humanities. And this is the reason why we in the research and innovation portfolio organize this symposium. We can argue about whether the humanities are in a crisis or not, and I hear some people engaging in that, in that conversation. I'm not sure where it's going. What remains 
is that we need to do something about this continuing discourse of a crisis in the humanities. Several people argue that saying that the humanities and social sciences are in a crisis overstates the case. But the point is that there are just too many reports and publications that use such apocalyptic rhetoric, and I think we need to pay attention. The symposium should therefore answer the question, now that we have these two reports on the state of the humanities in South Africa, so what? This is the reason why we in the Research and Innovation Portfolio at NISA requested our colleges to respond to the two reports. We did that because more than anything, we, we wanted to know whether there are any initiatives, policy or otherwise, that we as an institution need to consider in our efforts to support the humanities and social sciences. It is not enough just always to make statements about how the humanities are, are, are treated. This is time to say what is it that we need to do as an institution. Our commitment as an institution to the humanities and social sciences at UNISA is very clear. Five of our seven colleges focus on the humanities and social sciences. And the five colleges that focus on the, so, on the humanities and social sciences together, they produce more than 90% of the research outputs at UNISA. More than 90%. I think, to be exact, in, 20, in, in 2010, they produced 92% of the research outputs at UNISA. These colleges also have the highest number of students and produce the highest number of graduates at UNISA. So if truth be told, the revenue that we earn from the DHET as a university is mainly due to the work done by colleagues in the humanities and social sciences. It is not surprising, therefore, that all of the 11 research institutes that we have in this university focus on the humanities and social sciences. In fact, we have no research institute that focuses on any of the natural or physical sciences. In our view, the humanities and social sciences play a crucial role, not only in the life of our university, but also in the life of our society. We need to talk more about the contribution of the humanities and social sciences. Too often, government statements and official pronouncements refer approvingly to the undoubted contributions made by the natural sciences, engineering, and technology, to wealth generation, economic prosperity, knowledge transfer, innovation, and the development of new businesses, products, and services. But they fail to acknowledge the equally important contributions made by the arts, humanities, and social sciences. The enormous achievements of the humanities and social sciences discipline disciplines are often overlooked, even when these involve, and so often, a vital interdisciplinary research spanning natural and social sciences. My hope is that out of this symposium, we, get, we will get tangible proposals on what we as an institution need to do to ensure that humani the humanities and social sciences continue to thrive at UNISA. I'm grateful to our three colleagues from uh, UJ, uh, Peter Vey and Sherin from VETS, and uh, uh, um, Shamil from UCT, who agreed to come and interact and participate in this symposium. It's an important symposium for us, an opportunity to put proposals on the table as to what we can do. It's an opportunity. Before the budget period starts next month, we can put down what we want to see happen so that it can show up in our budgets the end of October. So I hope you participate freely and actively I look forward to a lively and most engaging symposium. Thank you very much for coming.